All right, what's up everyone? Back again on the Greyhound investment page uh, with your favorite advisors, Arvin and Dalvin. And yes, we've got Pikachu, Pikachu back again today. So I think the last session he was left out. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay, he's made a comeback. Slept so thank you for joining us. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, so thanks. yeah, so basically we've not, uh, there's been a small gap in between, between our last video and our current video. And the main reason was actually because we just wanted to see how things unfold because there's so much uncertainty due to the um, US elections and then a lot of uncertainty due to like the Malaysian budget. So there was like a, a bit of a wait and see situation and we really didn't have much to say except mm -hmm. for like uh, being patient and, and seeing what unfolds. And uh, we're starting to see how the market is reacting and um, we are happy because it does seem like the world hates Donald Trump. La. <laughs> In a way, la. So, I mean, not all, maybe some of them, but definitely there yeah. are some haters. Yeah, the way I'm looking is like, uh, especially especially like how Joe Biden is on the verge of victory. We don't know if he's going to win yet. So, you know, just saying that uh, the speculation is now that uh, he is like the favorite to win at this point of time. And due to that, on Thursday, with that news, the market rallied. I've never seen it rallied like that before. So hence why I'm saying like because of the global stock um, market rallying at that pace, I think it just jumped on an average of anywhere between 2 to 4% in a day. Okay, obviously mm -hmm. different regions yep. uh, grew differently. Uh, but yeah, the world definitely seemed very, very happy that um, Donald Trump is not uh, going to be the next US president. I think mainly because of... Um, I think his unpredictability. Correct. Yeah. That's 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 the yeah, main that's thing. It's not very... that he's a bad person or anything like that. Uh, we don't know, but uh, we're not here to judge his personality. But I think his nature, his unpredictable nature, that brings to the stock market, and his unpredictability that uh, he just picks up a fight with China whenever he feels like it. Yeah. You know, just his just his nature. There's no like um, there's no stability, and and you know when we talk about equities. And investments, we always like a certain amount of stability. Okay, so yes, so let me know your thoughts, Dalvin. Let's jump to you uh, now. Sure, and... thank you. Um, I feel so far. Uh, I mean, I uh, I want to quote from this one article that I read. Right, so uh, at the, at one point in 2016, when Trump was running for the presidency, right against uh, Hillary Clinton, right. So also again. The predictions was that uh, uh, Clinton would win, you know, and uh, Trump would lose. And uh, if Trump wins, they said the market will drop so badly, this and that and whatnot. But the the quote that uh, you know the thing that I want to quote here is even experts can be wrong. Of course. So yeah. it turned out the experts' uh, two predictions were one, uh, Clinton would win. Two, if Trump wins, uh, stocks will crash, market will crash. But exact like opposite happened. Yeah, uh, Trump won, and you know all the U.S. markets till now they have been on the all-time high, mm. and uh, just recently as well, uh, looking back in uh, this one or two days ago, uh, since the elections have started and the counting has begun, right? So at one moment you see probably Trump could have won. Uh, now we are saying probably Biden's going to win. Still, it's uncertain. You know, it's looking like Biden's going to win, but it's not a hundred percent yet. Correct. And again, yeah. Like we predicted earlier, you know, so I want to come back to the old point that we have mentioned in our previous videos, right? We predicted that if Biden wins, the market's going to, you know, have a, a slump for a while mm -hmm. and then it's eventually going to recover. So we may be wrong on that uh, because looking at the current trend, right? Even before the elections are over, the, the market is still going stronger. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah That's yeah. the weird thing. Yeah. Uh, people are already prepared. I mean, they have learned their lessons from four years ago. Regardless of who's going to win or lose, uh, they're going to go ahead with their plans of uh, investments, their trading Investment and all and that. Stuff like that yeah. And then the other interesting thing is, uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, the global market, right? basically every other region bounce about 2 to 4% in a day, right? Uh, I think one of the reasons has to be also coming back to US and the difference in time zone. So they are 12 hours behind us, right? So whenever their market closes NASDAQ, uh, SMP and all that. So basically, when their trading day is over, all right, we are sleeping, right? Correct. Yes. Now, when they are sleeping, it's our trading time in, uh, in Malaysia. Correct, so yeah. Nine to five. You know, that's the trading time. 
So, you know, all the effects from the previous day of a previous trading day from US, right, spills over to spills the, over the rest States of the world. Well. Correct, correct, correct. Because we've seen that uh, these past few days, tech stocks, uh, you know, technology and all that, they rose a lot. So, similarly in Asia, Southeast Asia as well, the similar mm-hmm. trend has been observed. So, what about, uh, okay, so there's this, this yeah? there's this tech, uh, you just touched about tech, tech, uh-huh, tech stocks yeah. before. I think, uh, we did we failed to mention one thing in our previous videos that if joe biden wins the tech uh stocks will be the biggest gainers uh mainly because of the large stimulus packages that uh biden has kind of promised ah, the yes the, right. the, the population la. correct so so do you have a view on that yeah definitely uh that also again comes down to who wins uh mm-hmm. even if biden wins and but if the Biden's a Democrat, you know, so just for reference, he's a Democrat, uh, Democrat party. Uh, if he wins and his Senate also is full of uh, majority, the Democrats, then the two two trillion stimulus that he promised, it's probably going to go through in no time. It's going to roll in, yeah. Yeah. If if it's uh, one way or the other, like let's say uh, Biden wins, but uh, the Senate is uh, dominated by Republicans, which is uh, Trump's party, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna take a bit of time to get the thing approved, and it may not even be two trillion. But let's just take the best case scenario here, where uh, Biden wins and the Senate is uh, made up of mostly Democrats. So the two trillion stimulus is gonna roll in, and this is gonna benefit all, basically all of the US uh, in terms of uh, regenerating or recouping, restarting the economy, right? So to, to kick kick start it again, correct? Uh, to towards recovery. And, uh, and then there's another article I read today mm-hmm. on Bloomberg. I did share it with you. It pretty much said that uh, I'm not sure who's the. Let me just uh, pull it out. Mm, sure. Give me a second. Pretty, uh, pretty much a lot of articles every day, lah. Yeah, <laughs> everyone is saying a different view, lah. So yeah. it's fine. So this is by uh, of Bloomberg by Mo- Mark Mobius. Well, uh-huh. he says like pretty much uh, that if U.S. equities, uh, sorry, if uh, Joe Biden wins, the U.S. equities will have a negative impact. And while the rest of the world, mainly Asia, will propel, uh, mm. it'll be good for, for the rest of the world. Lah. Which is, uh, it does make sense. It, it is in line with our initial prediction, um, mainly because of, uh, I guess, the, the he will uh, definitely increase yeah. corporate taxes and uh, increase minimum wage and stuff. So that might put some brakes onto the US overall economies. economy. Yes. Yeah, but then what's going to happen to the rest of the world is... Uh, of course, for us, we, we're interested in our investments. We're not too, too bothered about like what happens in the US. Okay, So our perspective mm-hmm. is always about investments. But it doesn't matter uh, if that that jam that I'm proud of, I say, uh, if the, the growth of the US equities is stalled, but the opportunities will then shift towards Asia, yes. which I think uh, because mainly because of the stability Joe Biden will bring to the, to, to the world. Okay. Right. Yeah. Again, coming back to like this uh, non-eccentric behavior, we don't want this uh, a mad mad person la, running the world. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's gonna help, as, especially China propel, and right. and we yep. know like uh, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons China's like uh, probably rooting for Biden la. Correct, um, and and you know what? Like China has like grown so much in the last two years since the. Since the trade agreement was uh, the first phase of the trade agreement was like agreed mm-hmm. upon, yep. and they've just grown like fifty percent, fifty percent at Correct. least in the year a year and a half. That's in just our, insane. In our our funds, right? China yeah. at the moment stands at thirty two percent growth for this. Yeah, year. and last year was a twenty plus as well. So it's what I'm saying. Plus. The growth is about fifty percent uh, in yeah. such a, a short period of time. Amazing. And now we were among us. We were discussing like uh, you know the fundamentals of of Unitrust is like, you know, if it's too much growth, like uh, we've got to start being a little bit careful. But this might just seem to be, uh, like uh, how do I say, uh, an exception for another uh, year, mainly because uh, China is still on, on, on like a huge uh, trajectory, trajectory, growth yeah. trajectory. And with Joe Biden winning, yeah, they might have a bit of an open field mm. to grow for another year. So now, and this is a good problem uh, to have. Uh, because uh, we always try to put our funds in the right places. So if everything is flying up, we want to make sure we pick the best out of best funds to to ensure that um, mm. 
our clients make make the money they they deserve lah. and mainly why they come to us so we want to make sure that happens but uh saying that i will still be slightly careful with the china funds because they've just done too well they've done extremely extremely well yeah. and uh so 50% growth in 2 years seems to be a little bit over the top um I'm not saying it's not happened. Indian fund somewhere about five to seven years ago grew about seventy percent in two years. Mm, so right. I do believe there's a little bit more growth in China. Maybe one more year of a double digit, and uh, I don't know, man. It cannot go like this forever. But let's just hope uh, it does for our benefit. Let's, let's hope progress. Also, Malaysian funds so do the yeah. same, like, bro. <laughs> Malaysian funds are a little bit more volatile. Uh, yeah. at this point of time because of our political situation unfortunately yeah so maybe let's talk about the budget uh, yeah. i think uh, as soon as the budget was announced uh, the friday uh, the what what do we have in malaysia can I, i can't remember now our bursa bursa yeah, kind of bursa. rebounded back to about the, um, LCI, 1500 yeah. points or something along those lines so it made a recovery because like the last two weeks due to this whole political climate it's just been been a bit off again okay. yep. so so we've done that um, done quite well in the last week especially it's rallied back to like its normal place and around and i'm really really hoping next week um, the growth continues mainly because of the the stimulus and the uh, announcements and everything that's been introduced by this this new budget mm. hopefully this thing keeps growing uh upwards and um we start enjoying some margins that we that our clients deserve yeah correct and then uh, also to add on to the to the budget right i think there are a few changes here and there they've made like to epf contributions and then uh prs is still real yeah so PRS, that's a uh, very PRS good PRS news for my clients changing. yes and, uh, so i think probably you you are a prs advisor as well so correct, you correct. can take advantage of this and uh, other than that uh, you know things like uh, uh, the epf uh, account 1 deductions account 2 deductions for insurance purposes and a reduction from 11 to 9% those are eh, i'd say normal things lah I mean, yeah nothing me, special personally uh, i don't see anything that has benefited me from the whole budget but uh, i feel what the budget has done this time is uh, focus more on uh, recovery rather than growth of the country's economy yeah and it's good because uh, when the country recovers on our perspective we we have like a huge and you know what i think okay so i'm going to add on a little bit of my thought here and now uh, if you've noticed um, you've been allowed to take out money from account 2 the last 6 months or so yeah. okay so that's 6000 dollars taken out and now you're allowed to take out money from your account 1 up to 6000 again now this is going to impact the liquidity of the epf funds Mm. Okay, so that's uh, now that's something very important to note about. So that's going to impact the liquidity of the EPF funds, and I don't expect it to do above five percent this year. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so looking at the uh, numbers, probably five, yeah. five at best. I think five is like you should celebrate if you get five. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at to be honest, anywhere between four to four point five is what you probably going to end up getting on your EPF returns. Okay, now we're not allowed to do direct comparisons, but You know, if you move your, uh, if you do invest your account one sums, you you do stand a higher chance at this point of time at least to make a better return. So something to start thinking about, uh, especially when it comes to moving EPF funds for for unit trust investments. So obviously, no direct comparison, mainly because um, they all move differently at different times. It's just at this point of time, I don't think. I don't think it's just a, a speculation that EPF can sustain its growth at at, uh, mm. at the levels. Uh, we only know around next one lah. What the what's the dividend announced? <laughs> Will it no next one? No, I think it's February, right? Is it? Uh, February March. It's early of the year. Or towards yeah, the end of the normally year. earlier of the year lah. So mm. anyway, that's still far away. Yeah. So yeah, so that's that. And uh, if you do want to know a little bit more about your EPF one investments, how how do you Uh, stand a chance to to increase your returns on your EPF amounts. Do let us know. We'll certainly try to guide you from there. Um, okay, so mm-hmm. yeah, basically that's that. So we've covered the uh, very briefly about what happened in US, and we've covered very briefly about what happened in like uh, Malaysia. So we'll come back and we'll speak about the US elections a little bit more in depth um, when the results are official. Yeah, probably, and I do yeah, I do expect can. a second yep. surge of funds flying upwards. Uh, which is really nice because it's towards the end of the year we could do with some good news and let's try to end the year with some 
like some eight yeah. to ten percent like at least yeah. you know six anything above six for the year i'll be very happy very happy to do eight percent average around yeah, across the board yeah. yeah that's great if you do hit double digits that's that's even better but um so yeah and uh, what i'll do is in the next few sessions i'll i'll speak about I'll start talking about what our last move was last week we did a few couple of moves last week and maybe we can like um discuss how we, we profited from like the Indonesian fund, especially yep. we made a, a good sum of money there. And uh, we also rallied a bit of um, cash just before, I think three or four days before the, the US election, start of the week. Yep. Start of the week. Mm -hmm. And that's already like starting to make money as well. But uh, we'll just have to wait to the for the US elections to get over with to, to like officially say that like what's happened. Yeah. But yeah, so it's last month, what we did was we, we rallied some cash for the Indonesian equity. And um, at this point of time, I think some of us, um, I'm making about 5% on yeah. that rally already, mainly That's because I've kind point. of like deducted my fees back into the account. So I think the rest of it, like if, let's say if you've incurred fees, you will be making about two and a half percent in a month. Yep. And that says super returns, you know, you can't really beat that. Okay, so we do these things. We we kind of like uh, try to find and seek and hunt opportunities to make sure your your accounts are, uh, are at the optimal level. Uh, you 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 engage us as advisors for a reason for us to look out for these opportunities. Yeah, yeah. We are we are we are more than advisors, I mean, On the front, we are advising. On the back, we are doing all the head cracking. <laughs> and we're investing ourselves. Like yeah. you know, to be honest, like every single move that uh, we make. Um, we, we actually invest cash ourselves. So it's actually a testament. So like I invested a thousand ringgit in my, in during the Indonesian um, decision, I invested mm -hmm. another thousand ringgit during the US uh, our prediction. Yes, mm -hmm. I actually invested another thousand on Friday. Okay, so I won't say what this is yet. I just want to see how the market moves first before making a, a call. And uh, if it does do uh, according to what I feel, it's correct. Uh, we, we, we should be all right. And then on top of that, I think Dalvin made another investment on Monday and Tuesday as well on the REIT funds, which is yes. making him money already. So I didn't right. do that. He did that. So, so I did that are... and uh, for one of my client as well. Uh. So ah. the day that uh, he called me, right, at first we were only going to top up for US. And, uh, you know, while checking, I saw like, hey, we have a chance in uh, REITs as well. Let's just put into it as well. So yeah, he must be uh, a very happy yeah, customer. It, it must be okay, lah. Yeah, he's happy for now because uh, it's showing uh, positive results, lah. Mm, but of course, reach has a long way to go before. Yeah, reach has a long way, but doesn't matter as long as it even if it bounces by another four percent for the year. Mm. We, that's what we want to catch. We want to catch the four percent growth. Yep. So yeah, basically that's that. Uh, we cannot cry about like it's dropped to 14, 17 percent. This is one of those yeah, things, okay? Everything. So, but now can we catch up? margins so that's what we did so in march we caught up and we got all our accounts positive because we moved out our reads and we bought malaysian equities and thank you to the glove sectors we've covered this in detail this is old story now we've kind of like made a huge sum from there so we've covered our losses okay so now opportunities are starting to to show up in different places like some opportunities are showing up in reads not too much but like they're start, starting to show up mm -hmm. in a few places so we're not going to try to take advantage of those places as well but as long as in our account the net amount is uh, always positive we are happy because uh so yeah get get yourself to a goal account member we can really 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 do a lot more for you yep I'm, uh, okay one tenth there <laughs> yeah so it's a it's seriously the amount of work that we can do on our goal accounts right it's it's amazing and uh, this and that Ooh. correct yeah okay so that's that i think right, uh, we've sure. kind of like gone out of topic already yeah uh, we got uh, a little I bit mean, off uh, track but that's okay still, uh, once in a while <laughs> once in a while we, we kind of uh i think it's just been a very happy week for us in uh in the greyhound um investment mm. team because whatever we've kind of like um the, the moves that we've been making from one month ago till today it's kind of like really it's, positive, it's, positive. yeah it's, it's done really well for us so uh, i remember on friday afternoon i was so happy like i think i wasn't like uh operating well really so i kind of like kept my phone aside don't say something stupid to anyone just enjoy yeah. it <laughs> i think it was one of the rare times where we saw like all almost all of the funds everything and it, it jumped so much but you know i'm gonna I mean, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves. There will be a slight correction somewhere next week, 
but uh, it's okay as mm. long as um, it, it keeps going upwards that's what we want at the end of the day all right all right so all that's right. that guys thank you very much for joining us and right. uh, we hope to see you and speak to you soon do get in touch with our if you're on YouTube get in touch with like our whatsapp links at the bottom and uh, if you're on Facebook drop us a message and uh, yeah if you know us personally do drop us a message as well we'll be more than happy to assess and help out with your portfolios all right all right then take Are care we, everyone and i will see you soon uh, we'll see you soon bye bye